Hello Vinyl community, my name is Alesh Bikar and this is another video exploring the world of fascinating music. And no, I will not introduce myself like that from now on in every video. It's just a little nod towards my uh, vinyl fellow Steve Carlson and he will know why. Um, I just saw um, a super charming video created by Norman Maslow and uh, it's a video concerning uh, 420 albums, uh, so kind of hemp and cannabis oriented stoner music. Uh, it was a contribution to uh, a VC contest and uh, it was obviously highly inspiring and uh, also almost made me a little envious that I didn't come up with that because this is kind of in my ballpark and so this should have been my idea. But the video I saw was a contribution to a VC contest uh, set up by someone else and um, my video here is not a contribution to that simply because when I looked at the questionnaire just uh, my own musical proclivities just did not lend themselves uh, so well to the questions, but I still was so inspired and I thought yes, it's about time to create a uh, 420 uh, album video and um, Obviously, this is a highly subjective matter the general idea that a particular piece of music kind of goes well with the uh, smoking of hemp uh, is highly subjective and honestly, I've met people that were big potheads and listened only to heavy metal or industrial, so who am I to judge? So um, for many people I think uh, kind of cannabis oriented music is uh, probably reggae or some kind of a very peculiar psychedelic folk music of sorts. Um, so I guess my own path here is a little bit different and uh, kind of looking for a different kind of vibe. Uh, this time this video um, will not have any kind of jazz fusion or this type of music or progressive rock as most of my videos usually have. Um, it will be very kind of spheric and atmospheric and uh, very hypnotic and trance-like. But also it's gotta be snappy because uh, we are talking about 42 perfect albums for 420 and uh, that means I can't sit here and describe each single record although uh, this kind of uh, long-winded <laughs> length would probably uh, be kind of appropriate for a pot oriented video but uh, let's not go there. So let me start with one CD here and most of it will be on vinyl but I have a whole stack of CDs here also. Um, this one it's probably more of a research project uh, in regard of this topic. Um, this is a compilation I bought many years ago, which is called Café Rembetica. Um, the subtitle is The Birth of the Greek Blues. So Rembetica was a style of music that you could hear mostly in the north of Greece, in Thessaloniki, but also around Athens in Piraeus, uh, where the big harbor is. Uh, this was a sound, uh, kind of an underground musical movement of the 30s in the last century. It had a lot to do with uh, kind of a reversed migration, where a lot of exiled Greeks had to flee from the Turkey. And uh, what they brought with them from uh, Turkey to Greece was uh, their passion for hashish. And uh, so they set up all these kind of underground type of cafes in Greece uh, where they uh, smoked hashish and uh, played and listened to this type of music. So this is a kind of interesting cultural phenomenon and certainly more than enough uh, pot related. Um, now this one is a bit of a unusual choice at first sight, but I always felt that this is a kind of a really a strong 420 album. It's the Technodon uh, by Yellow Magic Orchestra. Um, it's a purely electronic album, but it has this kind of a strange uh, neo hippie vibe to it. And uh, so uh, I remember back in the day, um, this kind of served its purpose very well. Um, this one here, very obvious choice, 
Kokoromochi by Sons of Arca, uh, dub combined with uh, kind of traditional musical elements of India. Uh, do I need to say more? This this album here I have already shown one or two times. This is the traditional music of Amygdala by the Hungarian artist Laszlo Hortobagyi. Um, yeah, this is a pretty cool, slightly dark album in, in places, uh, but very atmospheric and very kind of a futuristic. Uh, at the same time, kind of very much rooted uh, in uh, Middle Eastern music. Um, so, um, yeah, you can imagine uh, how this kind of works well. Um, this one, in this context, rather a classic choice, Passion by Peter Gabriel. So, uh, yeah, I had seen a few circling joints to this soundtrack. Um, another classic of the late 90s, I think, uh, Leftism by Left Field. Um, very much a pot compatible album and uh, quite popular as such, I believe. Um, this one is a bit of a unique one, I think, uh, and probably not in everybody's vein, but um, once you get there, you get there. This is The Sadness of Things by Stephen Stapleton and David Tibet. Uh, this is basically two giant, uh, kind of minimalistic, uh, dark ambient tracks, uh, but um, it has this kind of a strange, very remote atmosphere and can be a very interesting acoustic canvas. Yeah, this one, a uh, wonderful record uh, and probably quite popular amongst all kind of uh, potheads, uh, Diaspora by... Uh, Natasha Atlas, uh, the one album she recorded with Transglobal Underground. Uh, so this is kind of a North African vibe with some incredible vocals and overall a wonderful record that uh, certainly goes well with the 420. Now uh, let's start uh, with some albums here. I mean, in this kind of a selection or list, there has to be at least one record uh, by John Hassel. So I chose two. One of them is Power Spot, uh, one of his finest examples of this so called fourth world music. Um, the other one is uh, City Work of Fiction, which is a kind of John Hassel going urban, slightly more busy album. Um, Trance by Neil Young. You know what I'm gonna say next. You know exactly what I'm gonna say next. Of course, this is my favorite Neil Young album. You know me. Since we were talking about Yellow Magic Orchestra, this is the, the Mental Sports Mix Mixes by Haruomi Hosono. Uh, this is basically a remix album where different kind of DJs and producers remix uh, tracks by Haruomi Hosono. The result is a kind of very hypnotic uh, electro and techno music, uh, but never obtrusive, mostly rather kind of laid back and uh, pretty cool. Bombardea by Leroy, um, a project from uh, Bavaria in Germany. Uh, it's a kind of a cool, cool 420 album, I would say. I mean, it has this kind of a mood or vibe of a journey or a trip, uh, and no pun intended. Yeah, let's go back to the 80s. Quiet by Sheila Chandra. Now, this album was most certainly not produced uh, with, with the idea in mind to create any kind of uh, pothead uh, oriented music, uh, but I think uh, inadvertently it turned out that way. Let's have a look to Istanbul. Um, not for the last time in this list, by the way. Um, this is uh, the album Divan by Orient Expressions. Uh, this is a wonderful. Uh, short-lived uh, project from Istanbul uh, that has created this kind of uh, instrumental double album that is extremely laid back and kind of atmospheric, uh, kind of uh, capturing uh, the vibe of the city and um, well it's Istanbul so I mean it's gotta be pot oriented doesn't it? <laughs> now this one probably a rather classic choice Histoire de Melody Nelson by Serge Gainsbourg um, probably 
a album uh, created in a giant uh, fog or haze of hot smoke. <laughs> so, um, in a list like that, there has to be um, at least one that can dance album. So I chose this one, the Serpent's Egg. I mean, back in the day, yeah. We had used and abused this album for exactly that quite a lot, I must confess. Another example of a rather obvious choice, um, Elwan by Tina Riven. I would say um, this is probably a band that is not foreign to the concept of uh, smoking hashish, although who knows, maybe they are kind of upstanding, uh, completely sober chaps, uh, although... Um, I mean, I still have not met a single person from Morocco, Algeria or Tunisia that does not smoke pot, but um, who knows, uh, maybe the problem is with me and the type of people I am uh, congregating with. <laughs> I thought there has to be two Pink Floyd albums included in this list um, and uh, I chose Metal from 1971. Now, I'm fully aware that uh, probably five billion joints had been smoked to the sound of Dark Side of the Moon. And um, that's uh, all right by me. But I always felt like Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here and Animals include a lot of anger and intrinsic sadness. And um, certainly I felt like metal uh, with, this, with its lush sound and psychedelic explorations and this feeling of... Uh, summer in southern France uh, kind of uh, transports uh, the idea of a 420 oriented music certainly better um, and that's why I picked it and now uh, something probably unusual The Endless River by Pink Floyd um, now uh, it's quite fascinating to watch how much shit no pun intended uh, this album gets uh, by all kind of people ranking it and describing it online so this oftentimes uh, is being really scathed and um, even uh, someone saying that it's basically not a real album and should not be treated and regarded as such it's just something but it's it's not really there um, so um, I fully disagree <laughs> it's it's far from being my least favorite Pink Floyd album actually and um, while I really hate uh, this uh, this cover, um, I must say that uh, The Endless River is probably the only Pink Floyd album that was ever created to satisfy the stoners. With all the other records, it probably just happened without being intentional, <laughs> but here it must be part of the program. So uh, another classic choice would be uh, Space Hymns by Ramesses. Um, now this is a... Uh, psychedelic folk rock and uh, probably one of those examples when uh, cannabis had not only been consumed in front of the loudspeakers but also behind the loudspeakers. If you like science fiction and space and astronomy and distant places and galaxies well then this is your perfect type of album. Galaxy Cygnus A by Robert Schröder, a German artist. Uh, this came out in 1982. Um, so if you like kind of late 70s, early 80s synthesizer, experimental sounds, um, this is the perfect record for that. And yeah, it's a wonderful kind of uh, hypnotic uh, soundtrack uh, that goes pretty well uh, with... Uh, you mind if I do a J? The J. And um, I'm pretty sure I will use the word hypnotic a few more times in this video. In the same vein, Meditation by Eberhard Schöner, um, artist from Munich, uh, Germany. Uh, basically two tracks on this album, one on the A side, one on the B side. Uh, all very kind of floating, meditative, hypnotic. So you can kind of imagine where this is going. I thought let's include one album by Vangelis, although I would say Vangelis uh, is an artist uh, and his audience are kind of people that uh, both uh, probably prefer drinking wine to smoking pot, but uh, I thought his album See You Later is kind of a funny, uh, quirky and uh, slightly whimsical record that probably uh, goes pretty well uh, with uh, this type of activities. 
This one is so obvious that I probably should not have included it. The Universe Smiles Upon You by Kruangbin. I mean, it's it's on the face, isn't it? I mean, really, really, <laughs> come on. <laughs> In the same kind of vein or vibe is this record from the Netherlands, by the way, The Rabbit That Hunts Tigers. Uh, this has a kind of a similar similar sound like Kruangbin, just uh, just a little more funkier, you know, with more uh, kind of more spunk. And uh, but again, it's kind of inspired by musical ideas from Southeast Asia. And uh, so um, this is a kind of great album for the consumption. This is a bit of an unusual choice, maybe. Um, and probably the only kind of jazz fusion slash prog rock type of album in my list here. But I'm talking about Enigmatic Ocean by Jean-Luc Ponty. Certainly one of my favorite albums, uh, most certainly my favorite album by Ponty. Um, also because it's the one album of his uh, that has Alan Holdsworth on guitar and um, it's quite fascinating. I mean, this is a giant battlefield of solos between uh, Jean-Luc Ponty on violin and Alan Holdsworth on the guitar. And um, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's uh, quite mesmerizing. And uh, while it's rather busy, um, it takes a lot of vibe from uh, the world of funk uh, and uh, jazz funk. Uh, so uh, it's not too overly complicated and too cerebral and uh, it remains kind of a very kind of pleasant uh, funky listen. So I thought uh, two albums by Ryuichi Sakamoto who probably is not a name that one would think of when talking about uh, podhead music uh, but um, sometimes one has to experiment to find things out, right? Um, Left Handed Dream, his album together with Adrian Bellew and Robin Scott. Very peculiar record with a very unique sound, but uh, that's exactly the reason why it kind of goes very well uh, with uh, a lid joint. And um, generally, probably a the, the the album the one album by Sakamoto that lends itself mostly to 420. I said two albums by Richie Sakamoto. The other one is his later work, Heartbeat. Now uh, that looks like a bit of an awkward choice, uh, but um, it, this is more biographical, I must say, because uh, when I moved together with my girlfriend, like in 1990, I think, and I was uh, hardly, uh, I wasn't even 20 years old, but this album came out and we bought the CD and we had been listening a lot to it and we were both uh, passionate uh, pot smokers and... Uh, yeah, I mean, we f we re realized that this is kind of a wonderful, wonderful uh, soundtrack for uh, two young people sitting on the carpet in the middle of the living room. You know, these good old days when you didn't have chairs and tables and uh, you didn't have a bed, you only had a mattress in the corner of the room and life was still much easier. I'm gonna tell you that. So, um, obviously, we cannot... Uh, go through this list without mentioning one name and of course I'm talking about Brian Eno. Ambient 4, Onland, the perfect cannabis soundtrack. Um, probably in the CD version I must say, just simply because it's more practical. I think a lot of potheads embrace the CD for mo most obvious reasons. So this is a slightly a kind of a dark ambient album, but it's very beautiful in uh, Kind of reflecting a certain type of nature, a certain type of weather, a certain type of uh, atmosphere and meteorology. And uh, now I'm rambling. <laughs> so let's move on. Another album that I chose uh, from uh, the Brian Eno workshop is the one he did with Daniel Lanois and Roger Eno. His Apollo album. Well, that's more... That's just a fantastic record and uh, I find this is a total 420 album. Um, again, you have space, you have a kind of hypnotic floating and um, what more do you need? Now let's go back to Istanbul. Um, Otus Dirt, Otus Anai by Baba Zula. 
Um, now this is an album probably created by guys that are no strangers uh, to the hashish and uh, so um, it's a wonderful soundtrack uh, for exactly that and uh, overall a great record. So um, now we have reached kind of the finale of this whole thing. Now those last records are gonna show you are really kind of spot on <laughs> for, for what we are talking about here. So uh, this is kind of a um, selection within the selection. Let's stay related to Babazula. This is uh, Bubiruya by Dirt Music. Uh, this is an excellent album um, that was uh, recorded together with uh, Osman Murat Ertel from Babazula. So you have his kind of electric sass. Uh, so this is a very kind of psychedelic uh, uh, hypnotic album uh, that uh, is quite fascinating and has a rather serious message. It's a, more like a concept album that is uh, uh, dealing with the issue of migration and refugees. Uh, but at the same time, on a strictly musical level, it's uh, this fantastic uh, journey through uh, Mediterranean uh, psychedelic sound and uh, very mesmerizing and captivating and um, you kind of can close your eyes and just find yourself suddenly in the streets of maybe Cairo or Istanbul or uh, somewhere else. So a uh, wonderful record and a very kind of fascinating uh, musical statement. Obviously this kind of a selection or list uh, must have at least one album by Oyukai Conjugate, so I chose Peyote, um, their album uh, I think from 1990, more or less. Um, this is a fascinating record that uh, blends ambient and fourth world music uh, with all kind of ethnographic elements. And probably from of all the albums I have shown you here in this video is probably the one that I have used and abused most for this type of behavior. So peyote, oyukai, conjugate from England. Yeah, this one works really well. iRobot by the Alan Parsons Project. Uh, this is a great uh, late 70s uh, pop and rock album, but uh, very playful, very inventive, uh, very excellent sounding record and certainly a milestone that I don't need to um, describe too much because uh, who doesn't know it. Another case of obvious choice, uh, Benzai Ten by Osamu Kitajima. Psychedelic folk rock uh, combined with uh, traditional Japanese music and, uh, and in a way uh, totally stoned music. The next two albums come from Germany and are basically a one-man project that goes under the moniker the Sushi Club and uh, the artist behind it is half German, half Japanese. Uh, this is like a techno music or electro music uh, but very very kind of mellow with a lot of elements of ambient and very laid back and uh, and as I had experienced in my early 30s uh, goes very well uh, with the J. Now this is a 12 inch um, that is from the second album and it's called Tamashi. And this is a kind of great instrumental, quite inventive electro sound. The Sushi Club. Yeah, this one's super obvious. Uh, you by Gong. Um, doesn't need much more um, explanation. Pothead music for, made by pothead artists. <laughs> Yeah, let's have a look to Austria. Quite obvious, Krudan Dorfmeister, G-Stoned. I'm certainly not the first one to make that connection. Um, this is the Suzuki EP by Tosca. This is another project by Richard Dorfmeister. Uh, like the previous one, again, a kind of a mixture of trip-hop and dubstep and uh, down-tempo music in general and uh, kind of very trippy and very very stoned um, and uh, overall a great record of its time and now I have two more albums left that are both uh, kind of ultra 
pothead music uh, without any kind of limitations. The first one is Zulm by Muslim Ghosts. Um, certainly the most kind of trippy album by Muslim Ghosts. Uh, instrumental hypnotic ride from track to track and super fascinating. And I promise this is the last time I'm using the word hypnotic in this video. <laughs> and um, quite an amazing 420 soundtrack, I must say. So this is Zulm by Muslim Ghosts. And finally, the album 1000 Years by the band Two. Now this is pure ambient with all kind of a new age uh, feel to it. Uh, it's uh, music with a lot of kind of emptiness and empty spots in the sound. But uh, at the same time, it's very, very cohesive. And I have a ton, uh, tons of music uh, that is kind of empty and very kind of ambient -y and uh, um, But uh, I think none of them sound like Two's debut album, 1000 Years. This is the first edition that came out in this kind of wooden box. It's an incredible record and uh, I guess there's a reason why I'm showing it last uh, because uh, this is probably the ultimate uh, 420 album <laughs> in a sense, at least uh, in my book. And uh, that's it. Those were 42 albums uh, that uh, bring down every party. Uh, as long as it's the type of party where people want to be just lying around and <laughs> not to do much. So um, I hope you're all fine and um, see you next time. Bye bye.